Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video we are going over the new dungeon ranking abandoned factory very hard. You can see here I was able to get a score of 1.63 mil. Uh, that right now that's good for rank like 18. I think maybe it was even like 16 or something like that when I first got it finished. Um, I can tell you I ran this a lot of times, somewhere around a dozen or so to near completion or dying at the final boss. And the hang up here was trying to get two score boosts. Ultimately, the run you're going to see is a two score boosted run. I did, however, also complete a one score boosted run. Uh, that's a little bit different in the way the final boss works, the items that I use. And I will show you that as well at the very end, just kind of like a segment. With that being said, let's go ahead and look at the symbol enemy info. So this is what you're facing in this dungeon. And Kind of the way that I summarize this all is not too worried about Rufus because he's going to be the first boss that we fight in the, the path that I take. Other than that, everybody's either not weak to anything or weak to wind. So wind is going to be the primary element that we're focused on. As far as sigils go, circle sigil is the only sigil that I'm really worried about. One other thing just to kind of note is primal behemoth. He is um, kind of tough. He can one shot you with his body slam. And so part of the build that I'm doing here is to kind of deal with this stuff um, up here. You'll kind of see it's a really odd ending. Things did not go as I planned. However, it still worked. And so that's what you're going to be seeing. OK, as for the build, we will start with Sephiroth. He's our main DPS. He's using OB6 Dark Heavens for the physical attack, the wind potency, and this right here, 660% physical wind damage. We've got his uh, physical attack right under 4K. I can tell you this right here is just a stat stick. However, if I were going to consider another weapon from the ones that I have, I would probably really highly consider Torn Wing. Because of Solid Barrier, I think that could be helpful against Behemoth. And in future testing, maybe how I'm able to possibly beat it using three score boosts instead of only two. Okay, going back here, um, these are all stat sticks with the exception of obviously he's using Circle Sigil here for the break points, um, using the Wind Mastery outfit, using a regular limit break because single target DPS is more important to me than uh, AoE. As for sub equipment, um, I've got this for boost attack and physical ability potency. This is boost P attack here, and this is boost P attack here. And you can basically see that. Uh, He's got wind potency level four, which is not that great. Physical potency level three, that's just from this, which is pretty great. And that's where we are. Coming over to Aerith here, we've got her set up for healing and some wind damage. And so she actually is using Prism Rod. I've actually never wishlisted this weapon. I got my first copy of it probably like two months ago and then just kind of kept getting copies. And ultimately, I do think it works well because of this 530% magic wind damage that it does. Uh, at first, I started out trying to put this as a sub weapon on Sephiroth, but ultimately it was better to just let her be able to do wind damage on her own. And it, it, basically, I thought that was important because a lot of these enemies, if you can DPS them down fast enough, you don't have to worry about a lot of the annoying mechanics that they have. Uh, here we have poison removal because the second boss we fight, the dragon, will have a poison. If you do a lot of DPS, I've done runs, especially without a healer, where you can DPS him down before anybody dies with the poison. That's on you. There's also a buff that allows you to take 60% defense and poison resist. Again, could be helpful against Behemoth. That's on you. However, you're sacrificing a potential buff there uh, to score or wind potency plus 30 percent and i'd rather have the damage there so i didn't take that okay this is a stat stick for heals this is a sigil break and sub equipment this is just heal 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 everything here is set up that's how we've got her to almost 2300 heal and you've noticed that her other stuff her other stats suffer because of that and last we have tifa um importantly i'm using the Amaranth gear here for the boost HP because without it, I just thought she was a little bit low for the enemies here. Uh, probably the most controversial thing is I went with leather gloves here. <laughs> Although Behemoth is 
immune to physical attack down. He buffs his own physical attack, and my theory was trying to survive his body slam. If anybody's played this already, you know that Behemoth does an AoE physical attack that lowers physical defense to mid potency. He buffs his own physical attack, and then he charges the body slam, and it does like more than 9,000 damage to each person in your party. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go for the long game this time because I couldn't out DPS him uh, with taking two score boosts before he gets that off. With one score boost, I was able to, which again, I will show you at the end. However, the thought was to use all the gloves. Did they come into play in this run? I'll be honest, no, they didn't because some weird things happened. He did a move that I'd never seen him do even though I'd fought him like nine times previous to this run. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay, Sonic Spiral here with 500% physical wind damage. That's why we're using Motor Drive again, because you get more wind potency in this stage. Uh, this here, Somersault, is just for the debuff, because almost every single one of these bosses can be debuffed to some extent. All stat sticks with Circle Sigil Break. Sub equipment, it just basically looked at what are the best stats. And I tried to give physical ability potency a plus because I don't have a lot of wind potency. Uh, just the weapons that I have don't lend themselves to that. So this and automatic here and guide gloves, those two are giving her a total of level five um, physical ability damage, which is better than, you know, only being able to get maybe um, this wind potency to like level three, you know? Maybe I could have gotten it to level four, but I, I don't really actually think I could have. So, uh, or not without her other stats really suffering. So that's kind of where we are. That is the team. All right, starting off, we are going to run to the top right because we are going to face Rufus first, and then we're going to face the dragon, uh, mostly because I don't want to face them later, and especially with the poison and stuff, I don't want to be dealing with that. Uh, once he is stronger and a little bit harder to kill. We take the dog out first just because the dog can be a little bit annoying and because since we are uh, still getting our stance to build up, this fight actually takes a little bit longer than some of the later ones do. Uh, so yeah, you know you're gonna have to actually kind of you know hit him a few times, so might as well take the dog out first. The only other thing that's noteworthy is that I should have probably said this in team setup, but you do want to make sure that your uh, circle sigils are ruin res as opposed to ruin rub blow, because any of the counter mechanics in this dungeon will counter the physical blow, but not the actual ruin res. All right, 65,600. Not bad for first one. Here, we're going to take the wind potency because 30% is a pretty good amount. Like I said, you could take the poison resist if you want or the score boost, but I don't want to limit my damage just yet in this run. Uh, we will be taking two, though, and I think the first one's going to be right after we beat the dragon. For the dragon, I'm just trying to kill him as fast as possible, so I start off with the somersault and then just kind of unleash as many wind skills as possible. Uh, then taking note though that as soon as I see the poison come up, I am going to want to switch to Aerith and just kind of start saving her ATB. Uh, another thing to note though, every single time I've played this dungeon, which this is like my somewhere between 10 and 12th run, there's a weird lag that happens right after the poison breath. So it's kind of frustrating because you lose a little bit of your stance. Um, but like I said, I thought it was just on emulators, so then I switched to Steam, which is where I filmed this one. Still had that lag. Right after he does that poison, though, uh, his next move is the AoE Dragon Stomp. So you might also want to switch your stance for that. Okay, here we're going to go ahead and take the score boost. The reason is we're taking two, and I wanted to split them up between the elemental um, potency down and the attack and defense down. I didn't really want to stack either one of those because I felt like it would make things a lot tougher. Coming over to Rude, uh, this is another fight where I am going to kill the add-ons. I have done this fight in this dungeon with just targeting him, but I feel like the more consistent way to do it is to kill the add-ons, just because if for some reason you don't get him killed or the add-ons start targeting your main DPS's first, it can get a little bit weird, so I do like to go ahead and kill them, especially because my Sephiroth, my Sephiroth one-shots them, uh, so yeah. Then I'm just going to blow everything. 
Why? Because the next fight, I'm not going to need any limits, and so I'm going to use that fight as a charging fight. I do want to have them, though, for the final boss, so this is just a pretty good time to go ahead and get those off. And just basically focusing everybody, doing as much DPS as I possibly can. Uh, he does this <laughs> so be it thing, uh, which basically signals that he's going to be doing a sigil break here. It's really simple. It requires diamond, but anything will break it as long as your stance is max. And yeah, two is just so easy. So from there on out, it's just a DPS thing. You just basically jam your skills as much as you can until he goes down. Shouldn't be that much of a problem. 66,000, so every every score that we've gotten has been like 65,000 or higher. Here we're gonna take the physical attack. Basically, you're gonna get offered almost identical trance abilities, this boss and the next boss. And I just figured uh, we might as well take the physical attack first to make this boss a little bit easier. And ultimately for my setup, this boss is by far the easiest, which is why I like to save him for last. You'll notice I have not used a single item yet in this run, and here I'm just going to just basically jam all of my damage skills as much as possible. And uh, you should be able to take him down before he gets a significant move off. And that's that fight, 69,000 down. So now we have one more add-on fight. Uh, here, we're going to take our second score boost, as I had mentioned. There's one more add-on fight. We're going to come up here, and it'll trigger on the left. We'll just go ahead and skip that. It's nothing fancy. Get our Mega Elixir. And now I'm going to show you, if this was your first time playing through this, you want to come up here and push these boxes so that you can get your third uh, rare chest even though it'll actually show up as a little shiny thing. I always check these three dots in the right corner uh, Just to make sure that I've got all my chests and the first time I ran this I actually had two out of three It was like running all over the stage trying to figure out where it was because I was expecting it to actually be a chest All right, so we go up to the last boss boss <laughs> a behemoth and we are going to uh, look through items here I had struggled on him so much. I had died to this guy like eight or nine times in a row, so I went ahead and used the Mega Elixir. I used a Guard Jelly on Tifa just to try to keep somebody alive. I wanted to see how well it works. Arrow Cocktail on both Sephiroth and Tifa, and I finally feel like I'm good to go. I can tell you, every single time before this, I got killed by Body Slam. I was trying to DPS race him, and I just couldn't quite make that happen unless I took less than... Uh, two of the score uh, score boost trances. So here we go. <clears throat> we start off with the debuff and then Sephiroth Salty. Our limit, I guess I should say. Uh, and then just coming in with the uh, wind skills. Now, he does these head thrash and this uh, spin attack, which you'll notice is adding defense down to all of my party. It's also an AoE physical hit. This is where things start to get a little bit weird, because normally he charges Body Slam right afterwards. But instead, and I've paused it here, he starts this move called Stamina Charge. And I'll be honest, before this exact run-through that I was filming, I had never seen him use this move. Every single time it was the same pattern. He would do the two physical moves, debuff me, buff himself, and then start Body Slam. And then I would start my race to try to kill him before Body Slam got off. But this time, randomly, he threw a totally, like a curveball at me. So here he goes, Stamina. He recharges all of his health. And now I am, like, really confused as to what to do. And you'll see here, I even Omni Strike because I just basically forgot that it didn't work. And the only reason I brought it was to try to survive Body Slam, which he's skipped, and it's not even happening. Uh, I'm not sure what triggered that. If I, but if like maybe previously I had done too much damage too quickly, and that's what charges or that's what triggers the Body Slam. I don't really know. Uh, but you'll see here Tifa with that guard jelly. <laughs> She's the only one who survives because he does start unleashing a lot of quick AoE moves in a row. And there you go. That is uh, my best run, actually. 
and here you can see I am going to end up with an S+, plus and a score that, you know, I don't know, I don't think is that bad. Uh, 1.63 looks pretty good to me. Um, yeah, so that's that, and after this, I am going to show you just an alternative run, <clears throat> because I did one more run after this one, where I only took one score boost. Okay, real briefly, I'm going to show you the team setup for the second uh, run through that I did. And really, the only difference is the way the battle with the final boss goes. And again, I only took one score boost as opposed to two. And I changed a couple things with Tifa. One, uh, her costume or using guide uniform instead of Amaranth. And secondly, we are using Amaranth's claws instead of leather gloves. It's kind of weird the way the mechanic took place where I didn't actually, he didn't buff himself and do the thing that I wanted or I thought he was going to do. But in the way, this is the setup for that and I will show you that fight now. Okay, so in this one, I did basically everything the exact same except for I only took one score boost, which was the very first trance ability I was offered. Hadn't used any items up to this point. So I use a tent instead of the mega elixir. Arrow Cocktail on Tifa and Sephiroth, and that's all for the items. So using considerably less items this run, but only taking one score boost. So I was more confident that I could basically kill him, and you'll see what I was talking about <laughs> with, you know, uh, basically the, the pattern that he does here. So we start off, and this time I don't even have all my limits up. I was trying to get them, but I just couldn't. So he does his head thrash. He's going to do the spin attack. And by the way, it doesn't do you any good to try to cancel those out with your limits. Because although you can cancel them, he starts them back up so quickly that you really don't have time to get hits in in between. So you might as well just kind of go for gold here. And here we go. He's queued up body slam just like he did every other time. And I'm just realizing now that he actually didn't buff his attack. He only debuffed my defense. So my strategy with the leather gloves was actually completely wrong anyway. But there you see it. If I guess if he reaches a certain damage threshold, then he will queue up the body slam. But like I said, if you're strong enough, you can kill him before that body slam ever comes off. So I just wanted to show that um, mostly just... Because I think that that's an interesting mechanic that maybe you actually want to... Like, if you're around the same strength as me, you might actually want to hold off on your damage to get more time to kill him. Hopefully this helped you get an S+. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.